This is our worker vigilante. Chasing out the outside people in our community. We say we don't need them anymore because they have finished our people. We thought they are the ones helping us to do our farm work, but they are no longer helping us. To take our people to the farm, they kill them, they rape the women, and they do other things. So we don't need them again in our community. Why the security operatives and the vigilante are chasing away the criminal bandits element that are terrorizing the communities in Delta State? This was happening in Zamfara State, a freedom for the bandits. Terrorists released video showing their air fitness celebration openly in large gathering at Zamfara community. It happens on April 11, 2024. The terrorists who seems to be unperturbed gathered at the Erd Grand in Monhai town in Zamfara on Wednesday to perform the two rakat prayer to mark the end of Ramadan fast. Some bandits in large number observed this year Ramadan prayer and other festivities in open in Zamfara State, Northwest Nigeria. The terrorists who seems to be unperturbed gathered at the head ground in Mohaye town in Zamfara on Wednesday to perform the two rakat prayers to mark the end of Ramadan fast. In a viral video posted by a security analyst and counter-insurgency expert in the Ndekchad Bazin, Zago Zonda, Makama on his ex handle. The bandits calmly celebrate their prayer without any visible apprehension. The bandits could be seen with their guns. They reportedly took hours to recite the Quran and also engage in white jubilation. However, some Nigerians have taken to their ex handles to express displeasure with the terrorists gathering without being arrested or challenged by police personnel or soldiers. For instance, Blessed and Blessed Odoba tweeted, There is no way the community or government securities will not know that they are gathering. Another one tweeted, There is no way the army will say they don't know where these guys are. It is just disgraceful men. A very well-known leader in this country said that any attempt to uh, any attempt to, to, to attack and fight insurgency is an attack on the north. So you know when you have such huge political considerations, there are there are there are difficulties. I mean, Buhari said that in the newspaper. General Buhari said that any attack on Boko Haram is an attack on the north. So what you do as a government, you know, you know so you, you want to attack Boko Haram. At the same time, a leader, a respected person in society, somebody who carries, I mean, the last vote, I mean, the last election, over 12 million people voted for him from the north, a man like that, you cannot ignore him. Now he says that if you, are, if you continue to attack Boko Haram, you are attacking the north. You must, you must be careful. This is a clear justification that government knows everything about these insecurity challenges in Nigeria. I am not surprised about this. So many times I have shared clips of individuals and groups accusing the government of complicity. Right from the government of Borno State, how Boko Haram was formed, this revelation was shared by Femi Falana, senior advocate of Nigeria. In case you have not seen this video, just take a watch of it while we come back to discuss this matter. One man, God is very important, who started the Boko Haram crisis in Bono State. A governor, one Modu Ali Sharif, addressed the press two days ago and attempted to insult the collective intelligence and memory of Nigerians by denying any links with the dangerous, dreaded Boko Haram sect. I did reply him yesterday and I'm expecting him to sue me because he said he wanted to sue an Australian. You don't need to go to Australia. What you are looking for in Sokoto is in the pocket of your Sokoto. I'm ready to join issues with him. Because not only did he sponsor that organization by providing funds for them. In 2003, he had a deal with the Boko Haram sect to get him to win the election. And if he won his re-election, he will compensate the organization. When he won that election, 
He appointed Alaji Bugu Foy as the Commissioner for Religious Affairs to implement Sharia in that state. When the man attended the first executive council meeting, he discovered that they were all talking about contracts and how to steal money. So he went back to the camp, the Boko Haram camp, and said, where you send me to is Gida Barawi, the house of thieves. I can no longer be part of them. So he was asked to resign. And that was how Foy resigned from the government of Mutu Sharif. So to say that you don't know them is the greatest lie. Uh, I was just reminded this morning by somebody from Bono State that something was missing in my press statement. That in 2013, 2012, October 10, Alajimudu Sharif was arrested in Cameroon on grounds of his uh, uh, Boko Haram connection. But the government here pleaded with uh, the Cameroonian authorities to release him because he's a big man here. Yeah, he cannot be arrested. But two weeks ago, uh, a special envoy of President Ula Jonathan, Reverend Stephen St. Davis, told the whole world that Alain Sharif, the former chief of army staff, Ian Jerika, and some senior officials of the Central Bank of Nigeria have been funding the Boko Haram sect. Up to now, the government has not reacted to this very important information. So when you are looking for the sponsors of Boko Haram, uh, I think we now know where they are. But what is very disturbing is the fact that currently Nigerian soldiers are refusing to fight. A part of Nigeria has been annexed by the Boko Haram sect and they have named the place the Caliphate Republic. As of this morning, not less than 10,000 Nigerians are in Cameroon as refugees. They've left their homes and we want to want both the APC and the PDP, the two ruling parties in Nigeria, dominant parties, to stop politicizing the Boko Haram menace. What is required on the part of all of us is to unite and fight this dangerous phenomenon. But to start pointing accusing fingers because a former member of the APC has now moved to the PDP where he rightly belongs. When he was with, with you, he was not a Boko Haram sponsor. Now that he has left back, he's gone back to PDP, he has suddenly become a sponsor. This is so unfortunate. Why the likes of Mazen Namdekano is there in DSS detention because of some charges which is not up to this type of allegation that they're supposed to charge or they're supposed to investigate. Nigerian government decide to pay a deaf ear to all these insecurity challenges going on in the north. This is one of the reasons why Nigerians are no longer faithful to their country. So many Nigerians believe that Nigeria can never be warm because Nigeria is not warm. How can you tell me that on a, on a broad daylight that bandits are celebrating with comms. Okay, let's say maybe people are speculating. Are you sure these people are bandits? For people to be in possession of AK-47 without being registered, they are not military men, they are not allowed to carry such sophisticated weapons. They are supposed to be arrested and be prosecuted. Because if we continue to pay deaf ear what is going on in Nigeria like this and so on and so forth, believe me, time to come, it is going to overwhelm us. And as I speak to you, when you look at what is going on in, in a holistic dimension in Nigeria, I'm talking about the kidnapping. Before, we used to hear about kidnapping in the northern part of the country. But now we are hearing the, the incident of kidnapping everywhere from the north to the south, east to west. And if a good measure is not taken, Time to come will not have a place to call our country. But I believe that God will spare his people. That is if only we decide to take the necessary actions by defending ourselves since the government refused to do so. Let me know what you think on the comment section. Please kindly share this video to your loved ones. Let me know what you think by commenting your own opinion. Thanks for watching.